In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. God, merciful Father, I, poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and a great servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this day, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and made wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now.
be with you. We pray. O God, by the lead of a star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us who know you by faith to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Old Testament lesson is recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, beginning at the first verse. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord, all nations, extol him, all peoples. For great is his steadfast love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. The epistle is recorded in Paul's letter to the Ephesian Christians, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have briefly written. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which is given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for God in, for ages in God, who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord.
to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now after glory be to thee, O Lord. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen in the east went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Now declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and indivisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of salvation came down from heaven and was 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon today on this observance of the epiphany of our Lord is recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. They read as follows. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, almost four and a half years ago, Pastor Tom Harris, who at that time was the senior pastor at Hope Lutheran Shawnee, retired. And I was called upon to assist the associate pastor, Pastor Mike Panicus. That meant I usually preached at least once, many times twice a month, and made hospital calls and would take the Lord's Supper to homebound members. It was the spring of 2018 when I was taking the Lord's Supper to some homebound members that afternoon, and Lori accompanied me. All the calls were within a few miles of each other, and I had visited most of those members previously, so I had an idea of where they lived. As we were about to make the last call that afternoon, we approached Shawnee Mission Parkway, I couldn't remember if I was to turn right or to turn left. Now, I usually have a pretty good sense of direction, so I, I thought, ah, yeah. Now, oh, yeah, I remember. I turned left. And so we turned left. I was looking for the street that was called uh, Salem Street. I knew it was just off of a street about three or four blocks on Shawnee Mission, but I uh, couldn't find it. We not only went three or four blocks, we went eight or nine, 10 or 11, 13 or 14. And I decided maybe it was time for us to stop and get some directions. You know, I have a good sense of direction and I thought my memory was serving me well, but I guess not. Well, so we stopped at a community church and I went to the front entrance and there in the city, you don't walk into a church, you have to ring the bell, and then somebody assists you. And so I pushed the button, and the church secretary answered and said, may I help you? And I said, I sure hope so. Then I told her who I was, that I was bringing the Lord's Supper to some of our homebound members, but I couldn't find such and such address. Did she know where Salem Street was? She said, no, never heard of it. I have no idea where it is. Well, then I was bold enough to ask, could you check on your computer, on your Google Maps, to see where that street is located? And she replied, I can't do that. I'm in the middle of typing up Sunday's bulletin. I can't leave that and go look up an address for you. And so I said, very politely, thank you for your help, and went on my way. About two or three blocks down the street, we saw a mini mall, and Lori noticed that it had a UPS store in it. She said, they know where everything is. So I stopped in there. Now, I was wearing a suit and wearing my clerical collar so I could be easily identified as a clergyman. I entered the store, and there were two clerks at the counter. And the one man, one clerk, about, I'd say, in his early 50s, asked, could I help you? And I said, I sure hope so. I'm lost. He looked rather startled and said, Wow. A man of the cloth walks in here and announces, I'm lost. That doesn't bring me any comfort. Well, I wasn't lost spiritually. I just couldn't find a certain address. I told him my problem. He got out his phone. And at that time, Lori and I never didn't have a cell phone. He got out his phone, put in the address, told me, oh, it's about 18, 20 blocks the other direction. I had turned left on Shawnee Mission Parkway when I should have turned right. I had learned the hard way not to trust my sense of direction as a guide, not to trust my memory as a guide. I needed something far better than that. Oh. 
There are times when a sense of direction is a good guide, but it's not a safe one. Neither is my memory. The wise men from the east had a very dependable guide to take them to the place where the Lord Jesus was. They didn't need a Google map. They didn't need to have a GPS device. They had a star instead. The star indicated to the wise men when they were to commence their trip to go see the infant Lord Jesus. And that star, as a guide, took to the, them to the very place where the infant Lord Jesus lay. We do not know what led these men to associate the star with our Savior's birth. It might go back all the way to the time of Daniel, when Daniel and his friends were held in captivity there in the east. Perhaps Daniel and his friends had shared with those people that there was a Messiah coming who would save people from their sin. Anyway, it was God who guided these wise men, who awakened within them this desire to make a trip to visit the infant Lord Jesus and worship him. Worship the one who is going to pay for their sins, but not only theirs, yours and mine as well. Most likely the star that the wise men followed was different from the stars we see nowadays. Oh, but what a perfect guide it was. This miraculous, uncommon star led the wise men to the person who is the real star, the Lord Jesus, the light of the world who leads us through this earthly life into the very courts of heaven. And so when the wise men came across the Lord Jesus Christ, they worshiped him and they gave him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those gifts were evidently their way of saying thank you to this Christ, who would journey from his manger bed to the cross to suffer and die to pay for all sin. Their experience had to be thrilling. They had seen their Savior, the one who had come to save all people, Gentile and Jew, from sin. They saw the star, the very light of the world, Jesus Christ. Some people find it very difficult to believe that the wise men were guided by a star to the Lord Jesus. To them, that sounds just too far-fetched. They might point out also that, well, the journey from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, why, that wouldn't have needed a star because it was rather short distance and, well, it was easy to get there. It was a direct route. Well, we can't forget, though, that the wise men had come all the way from the east where present-day Iraq and Iran are. And we can't deny what the scripture has to say. The star appeared to the wise men again after they had visited with King Herod, and how thrilled these wise men were to see that star once again to guide them. We don't understand the how of it, but we don't need to understand that. It happened. The scripture says so. All you and I are called on to do is to believe it. Those who sometimes get all uptight about the wise men following a star the wise men guiding them to the infant Lord Jesus aren't uptight at all about what they're following or who they're following. It may seem illogical for anyone to follow a star, at least to them it is, but they don't have any difficulty whatsoever following that guide that's not a really guided life at all for them in their lives. But you know, it could be worth someone like that at times. We too can be tossed to and fro by the trends of our day. Maybe we move in and out with the tide. We may have this, this gut feeling that I could decide for myself what's good and right. I could decide whom I can trust to tell me the truth. Why? I can, you know, do what I want to do. If it feels right, it's got to be okay. I can decide for myself what's moral and immoral. It's my life, and I can do with it as I please. Oh, how sad if that's our philosophy. 
Sadder yet, if we profess to be a Christian and we've adopted that attitude. Oh, there are times when we're tempted to put our own twist or interpretation on what God has said in his word. We do so in order to suit ourselves and the lifestyle we've adopted. Other times we decide just to disregard what Scripture has to say altogether and not use it as a guide in life at all. Instead, we're going to follow the dictates of our own sinful flesh, of this world, and of the devil himself. And sometimes we as Christians who follow the Christ, who are using him as our guide in life, get kind of afraid to say anything about the dangers of disregarding what God has to say. We're afraid to say anything to other people. We might see a fellow believer in Christ living contrary to the way of God, traveling down a road that leads to destruction, but we say nothing, we do nothing, because we don't want them to get angry at us and be mad. So we just shake our heads and say, too bad what they're doing. They're making some really bad choices. But we're not going to say anything because we claim None of my business. You know, when a person does live contrary to the will of God, you and I have a responsibility to that person to show them the better way, God's way. We need to show them who is the true guide in life, the Lord Jesus. Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and they follow. That's a bit about following Jesus. Jesus tells us why. He says, I give them eternal life. Jesus gives that which is lasting, which is ever so satisfying. But how? How can he give us eternal life? He gives us eternal life because of that sacrifice he made for us on the cross. The Heavenly Father laid upon our Lord Jesus the sins of us all. And he took those sins with him to the cross, there to pay for them, each and every one. And he who died for us arose again. And his resurrection is proof that our Heavenly Father has accepted his sacrifice, made there on the cross, as sufficient payment for all sin. Dr. Martin Luther wrote, Where there is forgiveness of sins, there is also life and salvation. And so there is. Now through what Jesus has done for us, the very courts of heaven have been opened to you and me, to all who believe in Jesus as Savior. He's won that victory over sin, over death, and the devil for us. And Paul tells us, being justified by his grace, we are made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Yet for you, yet for me, even though we follow Jesus as our guide, we still have a struggle. The ways of this world, the lust of our own sinful flesh, the enticements of the evil one become so appealing to us. That's why we need to encourage one another in the faith that we might refrain from that which would destroy faith in Christ. Peter tells us to abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. And should we find ourselves following a guide that leads to destruction, then by the power of the Holy Spirit, may we, we be led to repent. Jesus said, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Those who don't trust in Jesus for forgiveness of sins, those who follow the wrong guide in life will be cast into outer darkness. We're told in the scripture, he that believes not, the wrath of God abides in him. And so now, now is the time to follow the Lord Jesus. Now is to have him as our guide in life. Now is the time to put our faith in him. For in him there is mercy. In him there is full redemption. He alone rescues us from that filth of our sin and the wrath of the Heavenly Father. God has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. He calls us to share in this peace and pardon and love that's only there in Jesus. The Old Testament lesson appointed for our hearing today tells us 
Arise, shine, for your light has come. That light is Jesus. He dispels the darkness of sin. He's come to guide us to our destination, to lead us through this life into heaven above. And he, he alone, gives eternal life. The scripture tells us salvation is only in Jesus. In the book of Acts, we're told, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. In Christ, the light of the world, our guide, the true, the true star, darkness no longer rules. And so we follow him who is our light, who is our guide, who is the star. Amanda Kennedy, who wrote the song Star of the East, expresses the Christian sentiments so beautifully. She fittingly calls Jesus, who brings us the light of salvation, the very star of the East. Jesus is that guide we trust in life to lead us through this life to heaven. And so we confess with Amanda Kennedy, star of the East, O Bethlehem star, guiding us on to heaven afar. Even through clouds we see thy light, thou hope of us all in the dark of the night. Fearless and tranquil, we look up to thee, knowing thou beamst through eternity. Help us to follow where thou still dost guide, pilgrims of earth so wide. O star that leads to God above, whose rays are peace and joy, and love. Watch o'er us still till life has ceased. Beam on, bright star, bright star of the east. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to sing the song, The First Noel.
time, those newly elected officers of our country can be put forward to be installed. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. <clears throat> to that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation establish various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the church follows the example of the early Christian church as described in Acts chapter 6. The twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, and we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The apostle Peter writes in his first epistle, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You have been chosen to fill specific offices and positions of responsibility in this congregation. You are to work with your pastor that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of the young and old, that the erring are admonished, and that discipline is maintained. You are to see that the temporal affairs of the congregation are properly administered, and that proper support is provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, in promoting the general welfare of this congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of Christ here and throughout the world. While holiness of living and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of the congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, Show yourselves by word and example to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept the office entrusted to you, and do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of our Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod? If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, you have heard the promises of faithfulness spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers of this congregation. Do you promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities God has given you, so that he may be glorified in his work be done in our midst? If so, then answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install you as officers of this congregation in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your office, that you may be good and a faithful steward to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. We pray. Please stand. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks that you have raised up these servants for work among your people. We humbly implore you to grant them by your Holy Spirit those gifts needed for the faithful carrying out of their tasks, most especially wisdom, strength, and willing hearts. Let your blessing rest on this congregation, strengthen the faith, 
quicken the love and enkindle the zeal of its members, that your name may be glorified and that here in all places under heaven the kingdom of your Son may be advanced. We remember with thanksgiving those who have faithfully served your people and have now completed their time of service. We pray that in the end of days we, with all your faithful people, may hear the voice of Christ saying, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty and most merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Go in peace. O oh Lord God, by a star, you led the wise men from the east to Christ. You guided them from afar to the very place where the infant Lord Jesus lay. Lead us, we pray, through this life to the very courts of heaven by the star of the east, the light of the world, our Lord Jesus. Give to us, we pray, the Holy Spirit, so we will remain strong in the true Christian faith and not be led astray by our own sinful flesh, by the enticements of this world, by the devil himself. May we ever follow the Christ, and may we, by your grace, receive that gift of life eternal. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord God, we have begun a new year. We know not what the future holds, but we know you will be there with us as we journey through each day that arises. Look with your mercy upon your holy Christian church, Preserve to it your word and sacraments. May we as members of your holy Christian church follow the scriptures as our guide to daily living. Look graciously upon our native land, O Lord, and upon all nations of the earth. Bless us with peace. Grant to all who are in authority wisdom and courage, so to rule that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord God, we ask that this would be the year you end the pandemic that has plagued us for nearly two years now. Please keep all health care workers safe as they tend to the sick and the dying. May we soon receive good news that the pandemic has run its course and is no longer a danger to our health and the health of our loved ones and friends. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord God, we ask your blessing upon all of your people, but we especially remember in our prayers Sherry Webb, Grant Healy, and the first vice president of our synod. We pray, O oh Lord, your blessing upon Pastor Lang as he suffers from COVID. We pray, O oh Lord God, you would keep these, your people, in your tender loving care and give to them the strength they need to meet whatever problems they have in life. Be their guide now and always and give to them, O oh Lord, your healing. Lord, in your mercy, O oh Lord, we ask your blessings upon all those residents in Colorado who have lost their homes and earthly possessions due to wildfires. Remind them, O oh Lord, that you are there for them and with them to help them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, to your almighty and gracious providence, we commit our church, our nation, our families, ourselves. Abide with us with your grace and mercy and preserve us, soul and body, blameless to the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the star of the east, the light of the world. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen.
Rejoice in the gift of Jesus as the light of the world, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, who made your incarnation known by the testimony of a glorious star, so that the wise men, when they beheld it, were led to bow down and worship you, and adore your majesty with their precious gifts, grant that the bright shining of your truth may lead us always to worship you with our lives, and lay before you the tribute of our obedience and love. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.